Global warming wreaks havoc year after year. Rising sea levels threaten low-lying cities like Singapore. They could submerge. But Singapore is reversing its fate. It is arguably the only city in the world that has greened more than a quarter of its buildings. What has Singapore done to transform itself into a green nation in the last decade? We'll find out from the people who live and work in the city-state's myriad of green architecture. plastic bottle could be recycled right over there. Her persistence may, at times, be misconstrued by her classmates. At first, I felt that Yenha was very naggy. But after thinking through, her intention was just to keep the surrounding clean. Yenha influenced me because of her passion towards the environment. Hey, wait! I will tell them how their little action actually creates a huge impact to save Mother Nature from all this destruction. If we come together as one, I'm sure my classmate and I will create something even better for the world. Po Yang Han is a change agent. As a chairperson of Woodrove Secondary School's Green Activists Club, she's been trained to influence her peers. The club organizes activities such as Environmental Education Week and interclass recycling competitions. Yang Han believes such efforts are all worthwhile. I have seen my classmates improving in terms of their behaviour. I was feeling definitely happy because I have seen how they actually took their own initiative to do things. I wasn't there to remind them. What Yang Han and her club members do will go a long way to help their school attain the Green Mark certification in the near future. Sustainability awareness and education is one of the five criteria the school has to meet. The others include energy and water efficiency, indoor environmental quality and other green features. Some of its teachers and staff have been selected to lead and impart energy efficient practices. The impact is such that the staff has really become more aware, similarly for the students. And so much so, I actually have students uh, coming up to give initiatives to say why don't we have mini recycling bins in each classroom as opposed to just having central ones in the school. They have become ambassadors for the greening effort to the people around them. Singapore's National Green Movement for Buildings began in 2005. That's when the Building and Construction Authority of the city-state implemented the BCA Green Mark Scheme. The BCA Green Mark Scheme is a green building rating system designed for the tropics and subtropics. The system ranks buildings according to how well they've adopted eco-friendly designs, features and technologies. The aim? To fight climate change head-on with a sustainable built environment. Over the years, the Green Mark scheme was extended to include a wider range of developments, such as schools, restaurants, supermarkets, and parks. Going green is really everybody's business. So it is not just the professionals, the developers, the building owner. It is also the user's responsibility to do their part for the environment. That's why we extended the scheme to restaurants, retail outlets, supermarket, data center, etc., etc. So everybody has that responsibility to go green. Since the launch of the BCA Green Mark scheme, the number of green buildings in Singapore has skyrocketed. It jumped from 17 to more than 2,500 in just 10 years. Today, more than a quarter of the country's buildings have turned green. These include 23 schools and tertiary institutions. 
It is a lot easier now than before, than we first started. And a green building is also a lot more uh, environmentally friendly, healthy, good for the user's well-being. That's why over time, people begin to see this benefit and they come on board fairly willingly. To attain the Greenmark certification, Woodrove needs to have a number of green features in place. The school now has a solar-powered fountain, a rainwater collection system, and a garden growing herbs and spices. Lush greenery keeps everyone in school cool and comfortable. Outdoor classrooms such as this use natural light and wind. It gives me a very happy feeling, like we are not wasting any unnecessary electricity. Also, through the connection, by having classes there, I get to come in contact with nature. And that's something we can't do within the four walls of, the class, of a normal classroom. Woodrow's green culture is not just confined within the school. Once every few months, Yang Han and her team reach out to the public through various projects. As one of the lowest recycling rates in the These outreach programs aim to create awareness on environmental issues and encourage the community to take ownership of their environment. Through that program, we also learn how to work together as a team and improve our communication skills with the public as well. Nationwide sustainability needs a supportive ecosystem. The school works closely with industry partners such as the Singapore Green Building Council for guidance and knowledge. The council was founded in 2009. It now has more than 450 members who are consultants, developers, product suppliers and manufacturers from the green building industry. Through the Council's Green Schools Initiative Program, students can learn about the role buildings play in environmental sustainability. For a long period of time, that responsibility uh, lies a lot only with government in some countries' cases, and in other countries lies with the NGOs. We all know that it's not sustainable. So imagine if you can get all the end users to have the right green mentality, if we can get all the thousands of students and teachers and staff to embrace it, I think we can achieve that target of 2030 a lot faster. Through this program itself, we realise our students actually learn more about green building concept and they are also able to see the application of concept in real life and real world context. With a committee set up and the strong support of our school leaders, I think we are on the right track to getting our Green Mark certification soon. Growing concerns about environmental sustainability have affected many industries worldwide. One industry that's riding on this wave is tourism. Green tourism has become increasingly popular in recent years, and one hotel in Singapore has attracted many eco-friendly tourists and intrigued architects as well. Park Royal on Pickering is one of the greenest buildings on our little red dot. Its Zero Energy Sky Gardens is the first of its kind among hotels in Singapore. Here, more than 10 types of flora species bloom all year round with the help of natural light and rain. Inside the hotel, natural daylight and shades from plants are harnessed as well. Guests are also encouraged to go green with easy-to-use amenities. What's more fascinating is how this building that sits on a narrow strip of land blends with the city's green lung. So we take a lot of cue from the regional landscapes and how the Southeast Asian landscapes has been maximizing land use in very tight conditions. So the terraces in Bali, in, in the Philippines as well as in China those are how people actually make use of hills to maximize planting area and for their own use. We managed to achieve a 215% increase in green area 
in comparison to the site area that is. And it's actually, that area is actually equivalent to the same area of Hongling Park being integrated into this building. So that uh, in itself is an achievement. Even before the hotel was officially opened, it received a BCA Greenmark Platinum Award in 2012. It's the highest accolade for a sustainable building in Singapore. Today, more than 70 hotels have met BCA's Greenmark standard. These hotels can save up to 30% in energy consumption. After decades of careful planning and cultivation, Singapore's reputation as a garden city has evolved into city in a garden. When property company UOL Group built Park Royal on Pickering Hotel, it wanted tourists to take home a piece of Singapore's renowned image. Green hospitality is the way to go forward. You know, it's quite easy for hotel guests to identify with green and garden. You know, more so in the CBD, uh, like this hotel, you can see that it will be quite a, a visual relief as well as a delightful experience. Within a short span of two years after the hotel opened its doors in 2013, it has clinched close to 30 awards. The awards encompass design, architecture, property, sustainability and hotel categories. It's no surprise why this free-flowing, contoured green hotel is a winner considering the challenges the architect faced. The fact that the site is so narrow, how do we actually increase the vertical green coverage? And hence, the contour and the terracing was a conscious part to, to carve as much terrace into the vertical form and then you get a lot more romantic kind of form, which is the contours themselves. And that provides a lot of pockets for us to create interesting gardens and small little spaces of, of, of respite for, for the users to enjoy. Singapore is land scarce and we got to build upwards and vertically. We strongly feel that density and greenery can coexist by integrating skyline greenery through innovative ways for the architecture. A recent survey by travel website Booking.com shows that more than half of global travellers will visit a country based on its social and environmental impact. At the same time, three times more travellers want to stay in green accommodation in 2015 compared to 2014. Kinseng's team has met some of these guests at the hotel. We realised that Tourists are no longer just looking for glass, concrete, as well as just brass. They're actually looking for something more intimate. And we also found out that through our survey that basically tourists are getting more and more environmentally conscious. And they actually use this as a selection process before they click the book button online. Besides attracting guests, the pleasant environment has a way of settling staff comfortably into their jobs. Kinseng has been with a hotel since 2012. And you know that the hypothesis of biophilia, which is this whole connection between the living systems and human beings, and how people get a lot happier when they're surrounded by plants. I think this, this building you know, has a perfect opportunity for a person uh, like myself you know, to be able to experience the best of both worlds. A pleasant, green work environment is key to attracting and retaining talent. NetApp, a global data storage solutions company, knows that. Their Singapore office at the Millennia Tower is awarded a BCA Greenmark Gold Plus Award for its eco-friendly office interiors. What helped the company clinch the award are the little details. Its office fittings and finishings, such as carpets and paint, are green labelled and do not emit toxic fumes. Workers here enjoy a safe, healthy environment. At the same time, energy wastage is minimised with the zoning of air conditioning and the use of lights with motion sensors. Then globally, we are very committed to environmental protection and it is not just Singapore. We believe in creating a workplace that is vibrant and happy for all employees to come in. And at the same time, uh, that will actually create a higher rate of positive mindset and employee productivity. 
Fortune magazine has consistently ranked NetApp as one of the top 100 companies to work for in the past 13 years. It's a NetApp and you can see around, you know, there's no cubicle, if you can see one from another. And, uh, you know, a lot of natural lights, you feel very energized um, and, you know, it's, it's just very collaborative and, and with the office around here, you have a lot of collaborative areas. One of the real tangent benefits that we actually see are employees that are very happy to come to work. We actually have excellent environment that we can really showcase to our customers and the cost of greening the office is only about 10% more than uh, a traditional office. But we have actually had a lot more greater returns. A green work environment can also shape the behaviour of its users. Raymond Tan is now a changed man, both at work and outside. For me, it's a journey. I come into the company about three years ago, not being too aware of the green movement. Uh, you know, we take things for granted. So right now, with the office environment, uh, you know, you have the different buckets for us to throw the different rubbish and you know you become aware that how you're supposed to treat all these different uh, you know cup, paper cups or cans and things like that and kind of when you bring home the same mindset and being able to do the same thing at home and feeling good about it sustainable buildings and spaces do not only benefit people they also create a better environment for our entire ecosystem One of the main attractions at Singapore's River Safari is this pair of celebrities. They're none other than Kai Kai and Jia Jia. The male and female pair of giant pandas moved from China to Asia's first river-themed wildlife park back in 2012. Three years on, the pandas attempted to mate for the first time, a positive sign that all is well. The basic thing is, they eat, they rest well, and of course, ultimately, we always want to see an animal mate. You know, once they breed, usually that means they're quite comfortable where they are. The giant panda forest is a 1,500 square meter state-of-the-art biodome. It's been designed and landscaped to simulate the panda's natural highland habitat in Sichuan, China. An energy-efficient air conditioning system keeps their enclosure cool. The double cavity walls provide good insulation, maintaining the temperature between 18 degrees and 22 degrees Celsius. Located at the Yangtze River Zone at River Safari, the panda's habitat covers an area about the size of an Olympic swimming pool. For the giant panda exhibit, we focus on two areas. One is the use of environmentally friendly material. Number two is to use energy efficient equipment to maintain the temperature and the lighting. Uh, example of an environmentally friendly material is the floorboard, which we use to create the boardwalk throughout the whole river spy and the giant panda. Instead of using wood, we chose a uh, greener substitute, which is a cement fiber board. It looks and feels like wood, but actually it's made of uh, recycled wood fiber mixed with cement aggregate. Beyond providing creature comfort for the animals, the entire 12-hectare river safari is in itself an exhibit of sophisticated ecosystems. Glass roof skylight allows trees and plants to grow inside the natural looking habitat. Over at the car park, bioswales collect and filter storm water. This system provides clean water for the wildlife and prevents flooding during the rainy season. Rainwater is harvested and turned into water flow to power the boat ride that's more than 400 meters long. The journey allows riders to view 30 Amazon wildlife species such as the jaguar, giant anteater and Brazilian tapir. Besides building the ride around the natural green spaces, more than 100,000 plants of 400 species were replanted as part of River Safari's reforestation effort.
The additional trees, plants and ponds that we have created and replanted has created homes and habitats for this wildlife. And as you can see, actually there's quite abundant uh, wildlife around this area. And the whole purpose of River Safari is to inspire appreciation and conservation of wildlife habitat. And we have to walk the talk to make sure that the carbon footprint for this area is low. River Safari's eco-friendly design and features were recognised by BCA and the National Parks Board in 2012. It became Singapore's first attraction to attain the Greenmark Platinum Award in the new parks category. So successful are the green features that the entire ecological system, both wild and captive, has benefited from them. In the past, it used to be more shady and with a lot of bushes. So the thing is now that we've opened it up a bit more, you see actually a lot more sunbirds, building nests, actually along the boardwalk you can see them also. Uh, you see actually a lot more monitor lizards, they actually come out sun themselves and we see quite a number of babies actually recently. River Safari has been reaping the rewards of its green features in more ways than one. Apart from saving on its utility bills, the company now has a wealth of experience and references to tap on. The most beneficial part of this is, I think it has been a good learning journey for us. This is the first time we are using this kind of technology and material and lots to learn from this and we hope to apply this in our future projects and to make sure that future projects are just as green and environmentally sustainable. I think for the case of River Spy, it is bringing awareness to people on the, the importance of fresh water to people and to animals as well and how fragile and precious this, these habitats are. As Singapore moves towards the vision of greening 80% of its buildings by 2030, Every effort made is cause for celebration. Whether it's for the animal kingdom, tourists or Singaporeans, every creature on earth will benefit from our conscious desire to live green. The speedy progress of the BCA Greenmark scheme has helped Singapore realize its Green Nation dream sooner than expected. This program is brought to you by the Building and Construction Authority of Singapore.